epithelial tissue. In this module, you will learn about the different types of epithelial tissues and their functions. All multicellular organisms, including human beings, have a complex body system comprising numerous cells, tissues, organs, and organ systems. The protection of these internal organs is considered as an essential task which is performed by skin, the outermost covering of our body. The skin acts as a barrier and protects the body organs from injury and invasion due to the presence of epithelial tissue. In fact, the epithelial tissue constitutes the outermost lining of all the body organs. Epithelial tissue is also known as epithelium. The word epithelium has been derived from two words. Epi meaning a thorn and thelio meaning growth. The cells of this tissue are closely packed with little or no intercellular spaces. In fact, the cells in the epithelial tissue grow as layers one above the other. The epithelial cells have the unique ability of regeneration. Epithelial tissues are devoid of blood supply. Externally, the epithelial tissue forms the body surface, such as the skin, and internally, the tissue forms the lining of the body cavity, tubes, and ducts. In fact, the epithelial tissue is always characterized by free surface, such as skin, that directly contacts the environment or the body fluids, such as the lumen. On the other side of the free surface, the epithelial tissue attaches itself to the connective tissue by means of a thin sheet called the basement membrane or the basal lamina. The basement membrane provides structural support to the epithelial tissue. Based on the number of layers present, the epithelial tissue is divided into the simple and compound epithelium. The simple epithelium is formed over a single layer of cells that rests on the basement membrane. On the other hand, the compound epithelium is composed of two or more than two layers. The compound epithelium is also known as a stratified epithelium. Let's now learn about the simple epithelium in detail. Based on the structural differences in the tissue, the simple epithelium is classified into simple squamous, simple cuboidal, and the simple columnar varieties. The cells of the simple squamous epithelium are broad, single layered, thin, flat, and irregular. These cells have centrally located nuclei that are elongated and elliptical in shape. The simple squamous epithelium forms the lining of the blood vessels and the thoracic and abdominal cavities. The cells of the simple cuboidal epithelium are cuboidal or square shaped with centrally located spherical nucleus. This epithelium is found in the lining of the kidney tubules and in the ducts of plants. The epithelium has a significant role in the process of absorption and secretion. The cells of the simple columnar epithelium are tall, elongated, and column shaped with an elongated nucleus at the base of the cell. Stomach and intestine are some of the key organs lined by the simple columnar epithelium. The simple epithelium is called as ciliated epithelium when the epithelial cells bear cilia. Cilia are fine hair-like structures present on the free surface of the cells. The rapid wave-like beating of the cilia facilitates the movement of substances in the lumen. Therefore, the ciliated epithelia finds use in the air passage of the nose, uterus, and the fallopian tube. In some cases, the cells of columnar and cuboidal epithelial cells become specialized for synthesizing and secreting biochemicals. In such cases, the epithelia are known as the glandular epithelia. Based on the number of cells involved, the glandular epithelium is of two types. 
unicellular, such as that in the alimentary canal, and multicellular, such as that in the salivary glands. Now that you've learned about the protective function of the epithelial tissues, it may be interesting to learn that the epithelial tissues help develop the glands. On the basis of the modes used by the glands to secrete their products, the glands are classified as exocrine and endocrine glands. The exocrine glands have stuff and therefore secrete their products on the body surface or into the body cavity such as the sebaceous glands or the sweat glands. On the other hand, the endocrine glands such as the pituitary or adrenal glands do not have ducts and therefore they release their secretions directly into the blood. Now, let's explore the compound or stratified epithelium tissues. The cells of the compound epithelium are flat and scaly so they can easily withstand abrasion. The dry surface of the skin and moist surface of the buccal cavity and the pharynx are composed of the compound epithelium. The main function of this tissue is the protection from injury rather than secretion and absorption. Irrespective of their type, the epithelial cells are connected to each other by means of junctions. The three types of junctions that are usually observed in the epithelial cells are side junctions, adhering junctions and gap junctions. The tight junctions between the cell membrane act as barriers to prevent leakage of fluids and proteins. Adhering junctions, on the other hand, perform the function of holding the cells together. The last junction, the gap junction, acts as communicators between the cells, supporting the exchange of materials and nutrients. Let's summarize what you have learned in this module. Epithelial tissues externally cover body surfaces as in case of the skin and internally it forms the lining of the body cavities, tubes and ducts. It has a free surface and a basement membrane. Epithelial tissue is divided into simple epithelium having one layer and compound epithelium having two or more than two layers. Simple epithelium is classified into simple squamous epithelium, simple cuboidal epithelium, and simple columnar epithelium. When epithelial cells bear cilia, they constitute ciliated epithelium. The epithelial tissue also develops the glands that can be unicellular or multicellular. On the basis of mechanism of secretion, they are classified as endocrine glands or exocrine glands. The epithelial cells are connected to each other by means of junctions. Three types of junctions are tight junctions, adhering junctions, and gap junctions. 